Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This time we're going to look at another MP3 player because if there's anything I love in life, it's video projectors, MP3 players, and like stereo music, headphone speakers, etc, etc. Anyway, uh, this is in one of those categories. And this guy is from a company called, hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly, Loran, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, link will be down below in the video, uh, description there. And so this guy retails for 50 bucks, uh, $49.99. And there's currently a 5% off coupon. So you get like $2.50 off, something like that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, for about 50 bucks, it's not the cheapest line of MP3 players, but this had a couple features that caught my eye and that's why I decided to take a look at it. Anyway, uh, just some specifications. Uh, it has a 1500 milliamp hour battery, uh, built in lithium uh, ion, obviously. It has a four inch HD screen. It says HD. Um, I, I, this resolution isn't actually HD, if I'm being honest. It's a 540 by 960. For a four inch screen, that's actually not horrible. Uh, so it's decently like high um, DPI or whatever you call it, PPI. Uh, but it, I wouldn't consider that HD. Uh, it falls just short of um, 720p. But anyway, you're, you're not going to be using this as like, though you can actually use this as a video player. Uh, I, I wouldn't really. It's, it's basically an MP3 player. Uh, it has Bluetooth 4.2. Uh, it has internal 8 gigabytes of memory. It says it takes a uh, trans flash card, a micro SD card, up to 512 gigs. So that's definitely good. Has an FM receiver inside. It plays a boatload of audio, video formats, etc., etc. Anyway, let's uh, pop this open. Now, I will say, I did open this once just to make sure what was inside, and it was a pain in the butt getting open. So I'm <laughs> gonna guess it's gonna be equally as annoying. So yeah, uh, tip for them. Uh, put some finger holes, some cutouts, so that I can actually grab onto this. Okay, anyway, we have the player itself here. And of course, it is a black slab, as pretty much all devices are now. And we have some accessories. We have a fairly cheap feeling pair of headphones, which that's actually, I will actually admit that's interesting. The uh, the molding actually shows you which one's left and which one's right. That's an interesting aesthetic thing, but yeah, these feel super cheap. So yeah, I'm going to probably end up tossing these. Anyway, I don't buy MP3 players for the headphones they come with. I have plenty of good headphones myself. We have a bag of goodies. And goodies they are. Type C cable, this is actually a good sign. And we have some adapters. And I've noticed a lot of players are starting to do this. Uh, one's a micro uh, to full size uh, USB A, and one's a Type C to A. And these are basically so that you can plug um, like a thumb drive or something into the device, or plug your phone in using a full size cable or whatever uh, to transfer music. And what actually interested me more than that is this actually has Wi-Fi and apparently you can wirelessly transfer songs from your phone to the device. So that's actually kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before. Anyway, uh, we have a piece of paper that's saying hi to us. So hi back, I guess. Um, we have an infographic here, basic settings, et cetera, et cetera. Upload from your computer. Obviously it's a mass storage device. That's a given. Upload from your cell phone. Now, it does actually look like you need an app called MiniShare. So that's another extra thing you have to download. Uh, and for Android, for iPhone, apparently there's Zapia Go. Never heard of either of these. So if you trust them, you, you trust them. If not, then don't even bother. But no, yeah. And here, specifications. Uh, anything that we did not read here. Takes uh, 120 minutes to charge, so two hours, that's that's pretty good if it charges fully within that time. More specific details about the audio codecs and stuff. That's interesting. And yeah, that's about it. So let's actually look at the player itself.
So we have the unit right here, and it's a pretty slick, I, I will admit, it's a pretty slick looking unit, and it's, it's cold right now, uh, because it was cold outside when I brought this in, and um, it's metal. It's actually uh, what I would guess would be aluminum. Looks like machined aluminum all around the edges, and it feels pretty hefty too. It has a very nice feeling for it. And then it has, I believe this is a glass back and obviously a glass front there, as I get fingerprints all over it. Actually, I will admit, the back gets fingerprints pretty easily. The front gets a little bit of, of uh, marking from you touching it, but not horribly. I wonder if there's an oleophobic coating on here or if there's like a screen protector. Yeah, it looks like there is a screen protector installed. So maybe there is some kind of coating on that to cut down on fingerprints or just because it's plastic, it might not be as susceptible. Anyway, we have uh, volume up, down power nothing on the top on the left hand side we have the micro sd card slot and we have i think that's a speaker grill so i guess it has a onboard speaker type c a little hole which maybe a charging indicator it doesn't it doesn't look like a reset hole i don't see a button inside there and a headphone jack which is a rare species nowadays anyway let's fire this up Power button, there we go. Looks very blue on camera, but it's definitely white in real life. And apparently this is an IPS LCD, so should be really high contrast, uh, nice colors, good viewing angle. Yeah, I, I can rotate the, the device around and you can definitely see pretty clearly and the image looks nice and sharp too. Little, like a beta fish or something going on there. And we'll unlock this and First thing I notice is it's it's actually pretty responsive. Especially for like a $50 device, I'm pretty surprised so far. It looks kind of like Android. Let me see. Settings. That's Android. It is running Android. For some reason, I was expecting some kind of SoC running its own like Java-based operating system. But no, this is actually straight up running Android. That already gives it massive points in my book. Uh, let's see. Kernel version 3.4.67, so it's it's a pretty old version of Android, uh, sufficient to say. But if all you're doing is uh, playing music back and maybe the occasional video, it should be fine. Clearly, we know we have 8 gigs of storage. And of that, because it's running Android, uh, we're only going to get about 5.94 gigs free. So that's how much you could store your music in. But... Like I said, you got that SD card slot in there, so you're not limited to that. I would only really um, install apps. And speaking of which, interesting, yeah, you can mount a thumb drive. That's why it comes with this little adapter. So if you didn't want to transfer it via a computer or a smartphone, you could just put on a thumb drive and manually transfer it that way. So yeah, we because we do have a file manager, and I'm guessing anything plugged in will show up here. We have the file transfer app. Yeah, there you go, that mini share app. And that's how they're doing it. So your phone, if it runs Android, it, it'll just run this kind of peer-to-peer -peer software. That's interesting. It allows you just to transfer wirelessly there. It does have a web browser. I haven't even connected to Wi-Fi yet. Um, I'll, I'll test that out in a sec after I log in. Uh, let's see what other apps we have. We have an FM radio, which, yeah, it's going to complain you need to plug in headphones uh, to use it as an antenna, so that's fine. We have a voice recorder. So voice quality. Let's just, yeah, stick this on high. Recording mode, normal. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing. Testing, one, two, three. Let's see if that speaker works. Volume's all the way up. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. It sounds reasonably sensitive. Um, audio quality, obviously, through Tiny 
little speaker isn't going to be great. You're not going to be using this as a voice recorder. Pretty much any app except for audio apps are just going to be an extra. Uh, we have ebooks, which I, I mean, the screen is high enough resolution and it looks nice enough. The viewing angles probably would be okay to, to read a book. Let's see if there's anything preloaded on here. Did we lock it up? No, nope, just had to initialize. Let's see my shelf. No books. <laughs> but you can read on it. Okay, fine. We have our clock app. So, yeah, that's actually really cool. So, this is just like Android. It is. <laughs> you can set alarms. You can set uh, your time, world time even. Uh, set timers, alarms, stopwatch. So, that that's actually something kind of useful to have anyway. I obviously have a smartphone, so I probably wouldn't reach for this, but in a pinch, this would definitely do. And we have a calculator as well. So, yeah. 3.14159265. Yep. 6535, et cetera, et cetera. And it being Android. So, yeah, I forgot to mention there's two buttons you can just barely see. There's a back button and like a home button. If I press and hold, can I bring up? Yeah, re recent task list. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I really like this. This is just plain vanilla Android, it looks like. And uh, what else we got? We got gallery if you want to look at pictures. I guess these are all the, the stock background pictures. That's a nice picture. Yeah, the screen has really vivid, nice colors. I like that. Exit out of that. We have videos. Yes, I agree. Oh, that's the uh, audio recording I just did. So yeah, no, no stock videos. What is this software about? This is actually MX Player. I use MX Player to death. I love it on my uh, phone and on my tablet. So that's actually really cool. Uh, comes pre-installed with the uh, ARM V7 Neon uh, version. And interesting, they give you the pro version and it's activated. So that's that's pretty cool. Nice little freebie. And I like MX Player to begin with. We have music and this... I wonder... I don't even know how you'd bring up. This looks very much like Double Twist, so I wonder if this is just an old version of Double Twist. But for some reason, I can't even, I don't, there's no menu button or anything like that, so no idea. I can't bring anything up. But yeah, the theme definitely looks like it, uh, which if it is, I love Double Twist as well. So this is checking all my boxes. Wow. Okay, we got a calendar, which is a calendar. Okay, fine. And AIMP player, which is another media player that can also do networking stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, so far, so good. Let's just close all this. And it's pretty snappy. I mean, going through here. Here, I'm going to actually do a test of the Wi-Fi. I'm going to log into my, my Wi-Fi network, and let's let's see if the browser works decently well. Though, if this is a very old build of Android and, you know, you might have issues with like very heavy sites, depending on how much RAM and CPU this guy has, but we'll, we'll check it out. Yeah, so let's just... Notifications. This is a very old version of Android. I don't remember that whole... Usually when you just scroll down, the uh, quick shortcuts will be right there. But yeah, we have Wi-Fi, brightness, airplane mode, Bluetooth, and the battery is, uh, there we go, turn that on, 93%. There you go. You can actually see. Uh, let's, let's turn on Wi-Fi and try to log in. Give me one sec. <laughs> so just just for some fun, we have Pretty Fly for a Wi-Fi. I, I like that. 
And I just saw Hogwarts for a second, and it's gone now. It's like magic, I guess. Okay, so we are connected, as evidenced by the Wi-Fi symbol there. Uh, I'm actually on the other side of the house from the router, so we are only getting like one or two bars, it looks like it flickers between. So that's kind of par for the course. Even my, my new phone the connection isn't very strong on this side of the house. But uh, let's hit up the browser and go to... I will say, this keyboard's tiny. I have really small hands in general. Uh, and even I have trouble sometimes hitting the wrong keys. So that's sort of... Eh. And I don't believe this even has a motion sensor. So you can't rotate to... Uh, to portrait or to landscape or anything like that so that's sort of meh anyway let's uh just type let's go to hackaday www.hackaday.com there you go there are problems with the security certificate i wonder if i might have to actually set the time on this <laughs> give me one sec and yeah, so I think that certificate problem is just because uh, the, the date wasn't correct. Yeah, there you go. It was not correct. You know what? Actually, for, for a device that is only 50 bucks, this is actually pretty snappy. I have noticed, I didn't actually charge this, and this was my first time turning this on, so it was at 100%, I think. Uh, I can check back in the video, I can scrub back, but it's now at, it just lost like 11%, just me going through everything. So I wonder if the battery life is going to be potentially an issue if you're actually using this on Wi-Fi and going through stuff. Uh, if you're just listening to music with the screen off and occasionally turning it on to skip, that might not be an issue. But yeah, I mean, I can just go in through here, open a link. It's actually faster than I would have thought for a $50 device. I would have expected, like, very low-end smartphone territory. And I've used, like, low-end kind of Metro PCS kind of phones that are, like, the throwaway ones. I've used those, and those are pretty, pretty bad. This actually is doing significantly better than I thought it would. Yeah. So last thing I wonder is, is it possible to um, to sideload apps on here? Under disable. Oh, you can disable individual apps because if you give this to a kid, you don't want them using something. And you can use security. So yeah, you could set up a password and whatnot. And, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, I, I don't know. I'll have to try to see if I can sideload my own app. The problem is, if this is an older version of Android, chances of it running like a modern app are pretty slim. Um, there are cutoff guidelines for, like, what versions of Android most, the majority of modern apps will run on. But, uh, yeah, if you just want to use this for music, it's not a problem at all. I'll grab an SD card, uh, chuck some music on it, and pop it in and see how that goes. While I'm at it, I might as well charge it up full and uh, just to see what the battery life is while I listen to some music. So I stuck a 32 gig card in, instantly recognized, no issues there. I wouldn't expect it to. Let's just see music. It's already gone through and started scanning, so that's definitely a good sign. I don't think this is all my music yet, so give me one sec. Maybe this uh, will take a little bit of time. So yeah, I have like 20-some gigs of, of mostly 320 kbps uh, MP3s on here. Yeah, it's starting to recognize them. It's taking a little bit of time. You, you can kind of see it stutter if I scroll through real fast. But yeah, it has all the album artwork. All looks okay. Uh, let me pull up something that I can actually play without getting uh, demonetized or whatever. Okay, so I, you can just search. That's actually pretty good. There you go. This is through the onboard speaker. Plenty loud enough. Just 
turn that down a bit. Let's just see. Okay, so we can actually have some extended controls here. Let's just exit out of that. Okay, pause that. There we go. So yeah, that worked out just fine. Let me uh, hook this up to like an external speaker or something and and let's just see how that sounds through the um, the audio output. Okay, I broke out the anchor. We're going to try it both wired as well as over Bluetooth. Turn this guy on. That sounds pretty good. Let's do Bluetooth now. Just unplug this sound cord too. Took a little while to find it, but yeah, connected real quick. Let's go back. Did I get it to lock up? I think I got it to lock up. <laughs> Let's just reopen that. Probably not good doing this while it's scanning the SD card, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, works. I'm gonna start walking away, and when I stop hearing it, then I'll let you guys know. Okay, so I walked to the other side of the house on the current floor that I'm in, and it's it's got about, I want to say, two walls, if you count the door frames, and it's, I want to say, like, probably, like, bordering on 40 feet away from here, and it was, like, right to the window as far as I can go, and it still kept transmitting, so... At least range is pretty good on this. Let's actually use headphones. I'm going to actually sit down and listen to this with a couple of, like, decently nice headphones and see what the actual quality is. Okay, so I've been using this for about the last two weeks, and I've been taking this to work and just listening to MP3s on this. And I inserted a 32 gig SD card, and that's where all my music is stored. Now, this does have, I think it was 8 gigs internal, which is honestly not a lot. I mean, uh, I've had no issues with uh, the, at least the 32 gig SD card. And it loads right up. It uh, took a little while to scan and recognize them the first time around. But now when I boot it up, it mounts the SD card within a couple seconds. And then I can just open the app. And all my music is just sitting there. But yeah. Uh, things I found. Battery life is okay. I was able to get through like most of an eight hour work day and still had like a good 30 or 40 percent battery life remaining. So I'm thinking this could pretty easily run for about like 15 hours with Bluetooth on volume, like medium low uh, without too much fiddling with the screen. So keeping the screen off, keeping it in sleep mode uh, definitely can I, I can see this outlasting 15 hours that way. If you have a wired connection, probably even better. I would expect maybe like 20, 20 hours plus. It does drain though. Um, so because this is an Android device, it takes a little while to boot. So it took like about 20 seconds to boot with the SD card inserted. Uh, I don't remember how much without. Uh, but once it's booted, you could just put it to sleep even if it's not playing music. And it will drain the battery slowly at that point. Like overnight, I think it drained it maybe like... I don't know, five or eight percent, something like that. So not too significant. And that's with I, of course, shut off all Wi-Fi. Open this up a sec. Yeah, I would just shut off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in that case to try to minimize the power draw. If you left those idling, that would obviously draw quite a bit more. 
terms of like the music playback capability, the app, this is basically Double Twist as far as I can see. I don't see any branding on it. This must be an older version of Double Twist. So it's missing some of the newer uh, niceties, I would say. But it works pretty much exactly as far as I can tell. You can even uh, go in through here and uh, manually adjust the EQ, which is fantastic. So I got this sounding like really good to my ears. Only thing that I kind of don't like is if you're listening like to an audiobook or you have like a long playlist and you want to keep track where you are, once you totally shut this off and reboot, it'll forget like what where you were in that playlist. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate, but I mean, I guess you could just leave this on and just put it to sleep and just keep topping it off and charging it. Uh, that Then it will keep your track like position and everything. But once you to do a total shutdown and reboot, uh, it'll forget that. It's a slight annoyance. Another thing is if you just want to shuffle like a folder or an album or something, uh, you actually have to select like the first track and then from within the playback screen, then you can turn on and off a uh, shuffle. There is no like quick shuffle feature like uh, modern uh, double twist has. So that's sort of, mm. it does look quite a bit different because I mean, clearly this is running an older version of Android, I believe. And one uh, caveat to that is I actually did try. So you can plug in um, USB drives as long as you use the included adapter this guy you could plug in a thumb drive to this and transfer your music that way so you don't have to use a wireless you don't have to physically wireless to your phone just use a spare thumb drive that's by far the most convenient and in addition to that i tried side loading android apps and it, it got like so close it got to the point where you know it tried to open the apk and then it said uh you know the the familiar warning that installing from unknown sources is disabled and it says go to settings to change that and you click on that and it takes you to settings and it takes you to where that setting would be but the setting is missing so i don't know if that's because this is an older version of android or if the manufacturer disabled that setting completely so you cannot install any apks on this and i wouldn't expect that to be really a bad like a major bad thing uh, because obviously you're not going to be running any games on this. This has no Google Play or anything like that. You're not going to run anything high performance. But what I actually did want that for is streaming web radio, because this, at least hardware-wise, in my web browsing sessions, it seems to load pretty fast, so the chipset is like good enough to, to at least run like web application kind of stuff. So this would be awesome if you can run some like uh, Pandora, Spotify, anything like that, the hardware should be capable of it, but there's no way to install the application, at least through side loading uh, using like the unit itself. You might be able to, if you mount this uh, to a computer, you might be able to push like an ADB a APK installation. I haven't tried that. It's sort of more than more trouble than I'm willing to go in with this. But uh, as of there's no easy way basically to install APKs, which I think is really a shame. Uh, that would make this fantastic if you could get web radio on this as well. I, I would I would have loved that. So yeah, uh, if the manufacturer is listening, please push an update to this to allow installing your own APKs. Obviously, you could put a warning, you know, it's at your own risk. Um, you might mess something up or you might crash the player if it's unstable. But at least give us the option to do that. Uh, because like I said, this is just standard android it's definitely it's an older version i think it was version three point something when i last went in here yeah 3.4 so it's, it's a very old version so i don't know how many applications would even work on this quite an old build so yeah i really haven't played with the video playing capability i i don't see why it wouldn't work don't think watching on a, a wvga a display that's only about three and some inches diagonal is going to be an enjoyable experience. So I will say the display viewing angles are fantastic and like the colors are really good, but just the resolution's a little bit too low and I don't think it'd be that enjoyable. I have, I have a smartphone that can play, you know, much higher resolution and the display on that is much better. So uh, just judging this as a MP3 player, I think that's, that's really where it shines. And that's sort of the thing. So I've asked myself, who is this player really 
for. Because if you have a smartphone and you already use that for playing back music, it's sort of redundant to carry effectively what is another smartphone without any cellular connection uh, capability. So, and this obviously isn't really a good idea for like anyone who, who's doing like exercising or anything like that. So I could understand getting a, a, a standalone MP3 player if you are like a jogger or something like that, if you do sports and you just want something that you could destroy possibly unintentionally and then it won't be that much of an investment whereas if you were to drop your phone uh you'd be in for a couple hundred to get it repaired or whatever uh, but i don't think that this is exactly marketed towards uh, people like that either because even though it has a metal frame it has a glass back and front I, I would expect if i dropped this from a reasonable height onto like concrete it would not fare very well so I think this is more for people who maybe you just want a a dedicated audio player that isn't your cell phone. Maybe your battery life isn't so great on your phone and you just want a dedicated player where uh, this does not need to make phone calls or do anything else. It is just for playing back MP3s. Uh, I'm actually tempted to stick this on my lab audio stereo system and just have this playing all day. It's, it's a lot more convenient selecting really quickly. Um, it's actually really responsive. So I can easily select whatever I want. I can search for it. It's a lot easier finding what I want to listen to in the moment on kind of a smartphone-like player like this that I can leave permanently attached to my stereo system uh, than something like a Sansa Clip, for instance, where the UI, even though this has plenty of storage with the SD card, the UI is not so great on this so i wouldn't want to i would just leave that on shuffle and never select any specific audio track but this gives you lots of ability to actually search whatever you want you can make your own playlists um it's fantastic for that and i also really like that because it has a web interface you could actually sign into um, cloud services on like through the web interface and download music wirelessly or you could just plug in a darn thumb drive. That that worked fantastic. It just showed up. It mounted. I was able to uh, to copy the music over. It was no hustle um, doing that. And yeah, this micro SD card is is fantastic having as well. As for sound quality, I listened over Bluetooth, and clearly that's going to be more of a more of a bearing on what type of Bluetooth device you connect. I also connected uh, like headphones to this, a couple different pairs of wired headphones, and there was nothing absolutely fantastic. It sounded, it sounded good. So obviously whatever audio DAC chipset that they chose for this is sufficient. I don't think anyone but like the most discerning, if you have like a $5,000 pair of headphones, then yeah, you're probably going to hear uh, distortion and artifacts that aren't very good but any normal consumer pair of headphones this sounds great with uh bluetooth sounded pretty good as well I, I noticed no major issues with that yeah and especially once i tweaked the eq to exactly how i i wanted it sounded actually pretty good to me so no qualms with the audio quality itself it took a little bit of getting used to though the touch buttons at the bottom for the back and the home i'm used to having the three buttons or where you swipe up and they're virtual buttons because like I said, this is an older version of Android that there are just some things that I've gotten used to with modern Android devices that aren't present in this version. Uh, for the most part, I would say comparing this to like just a regular uh, stand like flash based OS uh, MP3 player, this is definitely a step up. And especially I was surprised given the price. This is at least as of the time of filming 50 bucks. But because this is just Android and it's using one of the best audio uh, applications, Double Twist. This is actually a really compelling offer, like for especially for fifty bucks. Like I was surprised. I would expect this to be like a hundred or something like that, um, in terms of like what its feature set is. And you can actually go through if you were getting this for a kid. I would say this actually might be a good idea uh, if you want to give your kid like a smartphone like device, uh, but disable certain features so that they don't get themselves in trouble you can actually go through and you can passcode lock the settings 
you can remove icons. So you could remove this web browser, anything internet related, you can lock out just so that they can only listen to music, maybe look at some pictures, listen to the radio. And because this is just standard Android, you can go into settings and configure everything, pretty much disable specific apps. If I don't want the browser, there is no browser. And when you do that, it actually removes the icon and um, it, it'll auto arrange the uh, icons as well. And because it's just Android, you can drag and drop everything exactly how you want. Uh, there are no like folders like modern Android. If you uh, select an icon and hover it over another one, it'll create a folder that you can name. Uh, but you can't do that here. And because you can't install more apps, I don't think there's really a need to. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with this. This would, I, I think this would be great for like a teen that you want to give a, a smartphone like device, uh, but you don't want to spend a lot of money. A, B, you don't want to give them like, you know, full access to everything so that they can get themselves on trouble online or whatever. You just want to give them like a full featured audio device that also does a couple of other things like pictures and videos and whatnot. I think this would be a good deal for them. Uh, as for someone like me, if I were just using this for audio, this is fantastic. I'm already really happy with it. Uh, but it, because I'm a heavy Android user, I, I kind of am always out feeling like I want a little bit more of this. I want some more installability. I want to be able to push my own apps and install them on here. Because I think the chipset is actually pretty good uh, in terms of its capability. Obviously, you're not going to be playing any kind of hardcore gaming on here you probably could get away with emulating like Game Boy games and like something like that like SNES and below I'm sure this would be absolutely fine but uh, as of the posting of this video there's no way to really add your own apps that I can find uh, no easy way so anyway I've rambled on for long enough uh, once again huge thanks for Loran for sending this guy in hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly yeah overall if you're in need of a an mp3 player that you expect like smartphone like features from uh, but you don't need any of the data connectivity kind of stuff this is definitely compelling especially at like sub 50 bucks uh, for the quality of what you're getting and the capability i would say this is definitely a really good investment especially if you have like a kid that you want to get them an mp3 player that but you don't want to get them an actual smartphone uh full on anyway uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one bye